What's up everyone, it's Arash here and in today's video I'm gonna show you how you can make your design fully responsive in Figma using constraints and auto layout. Let's get into it. All right, here's my design and you can download it from the link in the description. So let's see what we have here. Here I have a desktop frame. As you can see, the width is set to 1440 and it's not responsive at all. If I try to adjust the width, you can see that nothing scales. That's because I didn't set any constraints for any of these elements. So now we are gonna make these elements responsive and then we will create the tablet and mobile breakpoints as well. Here at the top, I have this navigation bar, okay? So how should these elements behave when I change the width? Look what happens here. I want to make sure that this logo stays where it is on the top left corner and these two buttons stay where they are on the top right corner and also these menu items should stay right at the center. So I'm gonna ungroup these elements, I'm gonna right click on this navigation group, ungroup them and here I have three separate elements, right? I'm gonna select this one and I'm gonna make sure that the constraints are set to top and left. Okay, so if I select my frame now and I change the screen's width, you can see that it stays where it is. That's exactly what we need. Now, I'm gonna select these menu items, this group, and I'm gonna make sure that they stay right at the center. So I'm gonna head over to the constraints and let me set the constraints to center and top. Now look what happens. You see, they stay right at the center. But what about these? I'm gonna select this auto layout frame and here I'm gonna set the constraints to top and right instead of top and left. And now our navigation bar should work perfectly. There it is. You see, it's responsive. Okay, good. Now let's move on to the next element. Here, as you can see, I have a background for my hero section and it's not responsive, you see? As soon as I change my screen's width, it stays where it is. So let's fix that quickly. I'm gonna select my BG here and I'm gonna set the constraints to left and right so that it could stretch easily and it should fix the problem. Yes, it's fixed. Now let's move on to these elements. So what do we have here? We have a few text layers and also a button. So you may say, all right, we can select this group and then we can set the constraints, for example, to scale. And look what happens, as soon as I do that, first of all, my button scales, okay, that's not what we want. But apart from that, if I try to change the screen's width, look what happens. You see, my text layers stretch, but my heading doesn't push these content down. That's not what we want. We want them to be responsive, right? So let me undo that. All right, how can we fix this issue? Well, I'm gonna ungroup these elements first. And then I'm gonna select these three elements, my heading, this button, and this text layer. Hold down the shift key to select them all. And I'm gonna add auto layout to them. I'm gonna hit shift and A. And this way we can make sure that they maintain the spacing between them. So here the spacing between items property is set to 32 pixels. And now if I select this frame two, I'm gonna rename it to content. And I change the constraints to scale, it should fix our problem. However, now I can't set it to scale and the reason is the resizing option here, the resizing property is set to hog. In order to be able to set the constraints to scale, we need to make sure that our resizing property is set to fixed width, just like that. And now I can easily set it to scale and top. Look what happens now, nothing, okay? Our content doesn't scale. That's because we need to do one more thing. I'm gonna select this title inside and here as you can see the resizing property of this child, this title, is set to fixed. I'm gonna set it to fill container and now for sure it should work. There it is. You see, now it scales easily while maintaining the proper margin here and that's exactly what we need. However, this text layer stays where it is. So let's fix that quickly. I'm gonna set it to center and now our hero content should work properly. But what about this illustration? So I'm gonna select it and I'm gonna set the constraints to scale. Let's see if it fixes the issue. I'm gonna select my frame and try to adjust its width. Well, it's responsive. However, we have a few issues. First of all, 
our image inside is stretching. That's not what we want. It doesn't look very good. And also these browsers buttons are stretching as well. So we need to fix that. First of all, I'm going to select these buttons. So I'm going to double click on them and I'm going to set the constraints to top and left. So here we have left and top. And next I'm going to select my image here. And if I go to fill, you can see that it's set to crop. That's why it was stretching. If I set it to fill instead, and now I select my frame, you can see that that issue is solved, but our buttons don't behave properly. Also, this play button in the middle is stretching. So let's fix these issues quickly. So let me select these buttons. Well, as you can see, these constraints are relative to the screen's width. That's because here, for this illustration, we don't have a frame, we are using a group. So whatever constraints we are setting for these elements inside are against the main frame, which is our desktop frame. That's not what we want. So to fix this issue, I'm going to select this illustration group here and I'm going to right click on it and click on frame selection. This way we turn this group into a frame and now we can select this illustration group inside and just ungroup these elements. Okay, now if I select these buttons, look what happens. You see their constraints are relative to their frame now, to this frame too. Let me just rename it to illustration. So now we need to set the constraints once again. I'm going to select this illustration frame and let me set the constraints to scale. Okay, let me see if the issue is resolved now. Yes, it works perfectly. However, we didn't fix the issue of this play button. So you know what to do. You just need to select this play button and you can set the constraints to center and center this time to keep it at the center of this frame, this illustration frame. And I think we are good to go. There we go. You see the image inside is filling the whole available width and height. That's because we changed the image type from crop to fill. All right, I think our desktop frame looks very good, but we are not done because I'm going to create two more frames for tablet and mobile as well. So let's do that quickly. Let me set the width here to 1440 for our desktop and then I'm going to duplicate it. Hit control D and let me rename it to tablet. Okay. So for the tablet, I'm going to decrease the width to something around 770, something like this. Let me set it to 770. So let's see what are the issues here. First of all, our navigation bar items are overlapping. That's not what we want. To fix that, I'm going to make sure that I don't have any menu items on tablet. And also I'm going to remove these CTAs and instead I'm going to put a hamburger menu item right there. So let me use the content real plugin to look for an icon quickly. I'm going to go to icon and from here, let me look for hamburger menu. I can't find anything. Probably I can look for line. There it is. I really like this one. So I'm going to drag it and drop it here. Okay, nice. I need to put it right there and I'm going to place it here. Let me align it with my logo here. I'm going to select my logo and this icon and align them vertically. Okay. And the right margin is going to be 72 pixels, something like this. Great. So let me set the constraints here to top and right instead of left. Our navigation bar is ready. But what about here? Since we set the resizing property of this content frame to fixed, you can see that it's stretched so much. So what I'm going to do is this, I'm going to select it, hold down the alt or option key on my keyboard and just try to expand it to something like this. I'm going to set the width to 620 roughly. And then for this illustration, I'm going to do the same thing. Hold down the alt key on your keyboard or option key and try to increase the width to something like 622. All right, great. Now let's give it a try. I think everything should work properly. Yes. Perfect. Now let's create another frame for the mobile version. I'm going to duplicate it. Let me rename it to mobile and I'm going to decrease the width to something like 480. All right. It looks good, but we can make it look better. Here we have so much empty space. I'm going to select my logo, 
bring it to the left side. Let me set the left margin to 32 pixels. And I'm gonna do the same thing to this hamburger menu icon. Let me set the right margin to 32 pixels, just like that. Next, I'm gonna select my content frame, hold down the Alt key or Option key, and just expand it a little bit more since we have less real estate here. I'm gonna use as much space as I can efficiently. And now let's see if it adapts properly. I'm gonna decrease the width. Yeah, here we have a few issues. First, I'm gonna select this illustration and I'm gonna bring it down a little bit to have a little bit space between these elements. And next, I'm gonna select this text. And here, as you can see, the text type is set to auto height. I'm gonna set it to auto width instead. And then I'm gonna change its constraints from center to left and right. This way we can make sure that it maintains the left and right margin since we are in the mobile breakpoint, right? Now let's see how it behaves. It looks very good. Probably I can select this text layer and this content frame and I can move them up since I have so much space here. And now you can see that they behave properly. Now that you know how to make your design responsive, it's time to learn how to create responsive breakpoints in Figma. So make sure to check out this video on the screen. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this. Have an awesome day and see you next time.